boxes back there, so uh, feel free to get up and get some chips and something to drink, too. This, this would be a good time to do it before we really get underway. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll go over a few housekeeping items too before we get Jeff up here to talk, but uh, um, you all can see the cards on your seat and I see many of you have already started filling those out. Um, uh, so we need those for two reasons. One is we just need to uh, keep a record of how many people are here who attended, but the second reason, uh, of course some of you are getting extra credit for class and so we need to know uh, what class you're getting extra credit for. So. Um, I'll, I will be setting a box back on that uh, back table in the corner um, about halfway through the session that you can you can drop those in on your way out. And uh, actually, there's three reasons. The third reason is um, we are giving away uh, a book actually at every session, and this time we're going to uh, give away this one called Effective Immediately. It's a it's a real good little book about uh, uh, giving you some advice uh, as you go out and look for that first job. So um, I'm gonna I'm gonna do a drawing, and then I'll I'll email it out afterwards. So, um, or you can stick around. We'll do it right afterwards. So if you want to stick around, see if you won, we can do that too. Um, <clears throat> there are if you don't have a pen to fill out the cards, I put some pens over there on the windowsill, um, so uh, you can get up and grab one. And uh, last but not least, is on the back table there are. Uh, lots of magazines and um, different career resources, resources about graduate school, and um, you know those are free for you to take. So uh, take anything you want off that back table. Um, but with that, I'm going to go ahead and introduce Jeff. We're about uh, about 12:05 here, so uh, Jeff Green is now a, uh, a talent acquisition specialist, right? That's the title. Yeah, <laughs> he's a talent acquisition specialist with Enterprise, and um, uh, he'll he'll tell you a, a lot about this, I'm sure. But it's a great company to work for when you're, uh, especially for new college graduates. I mean, it's a great company anyway. But uh, they have a, a tremendous training program. Uh, I've asked him to come share about resumes because he sees a lot of them. <laughs> he can he can tell you from the mouth of a recruiter what a resume should look like, and so he's gonna he's gonna talk about that. Um, Jeff is a graduate of UC. Uh, he played football here, so. Um, uh, he's he's one of you. He was in your seat a few years ago, um, but uh, I'm sure he'll stick around a few minutes afterwards if you want to talk to him about careers also. Uh, but please uh, pay attention to what he has to say. Uh, fill out, uh, uh, you know, take notes or, or at the very least take mental notes, and then he's got some handouts here that, that you can have at the end. Um, but without uh, further ado, Jeff Green, everybody. Hello, everybody. Yes, my name is Jeff. I am a UC graduate, and I am now a talent acquisition specialist for Enterprise. So it's a very long-winded way to say recruiter. Um, what I do is I really view all the external applications that come into our company from all over West Virginia for all of our positions. So I see hundreds of resumes a week, and I have a pretty good idea of what I like to see. But I do want to start this off by saying that writing resumes is a pretty subjective matter. These are the things that I want to see, but take it. Um, put it together with some of your own research and also work with the Career Services Department to really put together that perfect resume. But what I'm gonna to say today is gonna to get you on the right path, the one that if I saw, I'd probably wanna hire you right off the bat. So um, I think we're gonna start things off today. You see some goodies on the table. We're gonna start things off with a couple uh, quiz questions. Now, if I pick you to answer, I'm gonna throw this ball at you. I need you to catch it. So don't raise your hand if you've got food or drink in it, all right? So question number one. Oh, I should go this way. The purpose of a resume is to A, get a job, or B, get an interview. 
That is correct. It will not get you the job, but it will get you in the interview room. And so what we're going to talk about a lot today is what to have on your resume to talk about, how to do a self-assessment so that you can really research what that position is going to be and how that your experience is going to be applicable and how you're going to answer interview questions. But that is correct. Which goodie do you want? Glasses? That's a fidget spinner. Enterprise fidget spinner. All right, question number two. True or false? My resume needs to be eye-catching. I should use neon orange paper, big fonts, and a picture of myself. Yes. False. That is correct. That is very false. Less is better. I cannot stress that enough. Um, there are a lot of cool resume templates, templates that you can find online that do have some neat font things and different colors and Maybe that's okay, but I can tell you in, in my shoes, I don't want to see all that. I just want to see your education, your work experience, what you accomplished during those, uh, those work history, whatever those jobs were. I don't need to see big pictures and colors. Really, less is better. Which present do you want? Glasses are good. The UV protector. That's, that's my fault. I was a bad throw. All right. The average resume review is how long? Who's got this one? Someone. Take a stab at it. Sure. <laughs> 30 seconds is correct. <laughs> what prize would you like? Again, the theme of this, less is better. I can assure you that when people are going through applications and looking at resumes, 30 seconds is accurate. I do not spend any more than 30 seconds. And that's why the shorter the better, the pertinent experience and the pertinent education, everything that you want on there needs to really apply to the job that you're applying to. So guys, again, we're going to go into detail on, on a lot of different things today. Here's a quick overview of the things I want to discuss with you and some of the advice I'm going to give you on your resume. Um, again, I, I can't stress enough, I want you to take everything I say today and mix it in with um, all the other things that you've learned through research and through the Career Services Department because it's, there's no such thing as a right or wrong resume, um, but there are some things we can do to avoid it from being closer to wrong than it is to right. Experience. So what are you going to put on your resume? Um, I cannot tell you guys how important it is to start really trying to dig into what you want to do after school. So what is it going to be? What field do you want to get into? What's your major? And what are you going to apply that to? You need to start trying to get relevant work experience now. So sophomore year and beyond, start looking for internships. If you're going to do an unpaid internship, now's the time because, guys, after college, you're going to have bills and you're going to have them quick. So you really want to try to get this stuff in while you're still in school and you can kind of um, live with some of those expenses. And so that is really, really important. But you want to start doing things that you're going to be able to talk about in an interview room. So including that on your resume is very important, but it needs to be relevant. Now we're also going to talk about how to make the experience that you have relevant. So doing a self-assessment, really trying to understand how you can apply waiting tables to a sales job or um, customer service or things of that nature. So a resume, it's really your business card at this point, right? When you go to career fairs and you're going into interviews, this is your way and your, your chance to really brag about everything you've done. You're going to get a business card. You're going to get to that point. Um, but for this, you really need to be able to take it, use it anywhere you want to go, take it to career fairs, always have one with you. And what it looks like and what's on, it's obviously very important. Um, when you prepare to write your resume, we're going to talk about what a self-assessment is. Now, self-assessment's important. Um, it's almost worthwhile to print out a job copy um, of whatever position you're applying for. So what I mean by that, um, if you're not sure of what you've done so far, if it's going to be able to apply to the job, take it down, put it on paper, and start to really look at ways that you can relate your experience to the job that you're applying to. It's really important. We're also going to go over a resume grid and how to really kind of take some of your different experiences, put them into a grid, and determine what's going to be relevant from that job, the things you're proud of, and really the ways to answer some of these interview questions. Um, outline your skills and abilities. Outline your work experience. Do not forget extracurricular activities, guys. If you're involved in sports, social clubs, other sort of clubs, people sometimes leave these off and I'll get halfway through an interview and their best leadership example is something that wasn't on their resume, so we had no way to talk about it, which is pure through luck. So 
sororities, fraternities, sports, clubs, all those things. Be proud of it. Put it on your resume. Um, we'll kind of discuss where and how to do that. But that's another place that you can really bring some of these interview answers from when you're determining what questions are going to be asked. Um, when it says a paragraph, we're going to get into detail about that as well. Maybe not a paragraph, but bullet points, three to five on every position. So you really want to have some points about what you're proud of in that job. And this is something that a recruiter taught me once when I was really trying to get into how to write resumes, what advice to give you guys. When it comes down to your job responsibilities, think of it like this. If you have two resumes side by side and both of these people have had the exact same job, if there's anything that can apply to both resumes for that position, it doesn't need to be on there. So when you're a waiter, we don't, we, we're, we're going to be smart enough to understand that you waited tables, you provided customer service, and you brought food out to customers. What we want to hear is action words, things that let us know what you accomplished as a waiter. So I don't know if this is something that waiters or waitresses do, but maybe you um, had an average of a 20% tip uh, in a span of three years. You achieved an average. We want to hear those action words. So I talked to you guys about this grid too, and this is something that's really useful. So when you're applying to a job, and you're listing the jobs that you want to be on your resume for that particular position, why don't you do this? Take the position that you have on your resume and let's talk about how it's going to help you to answer interview questions. So for instance, recruiting manager from Enterprise. Some of the things I was able to do, I consistently met our hiring forecast. I received administrative MVP award. Um, I was awarded exceptional achievement award. So all these things are, are what you want to have in those bullet points underneath your job with your accomplishments. Now, Success stories, this is something you want to just jot down things you're really proud of because as you're diving into what that job's going to be and what they're going to ask you, you're probably going to want to brag about your success stories. So having it here on paper is a really good way to keep that in the back of your head when they're asking you questions of, you know, behavioral interviewing questions, which I think there's something next or this week about interviewing. But you really want these questions to be answered by experiences and things you've done. So this is a good way to start getting your head working in the right direction to bring up those answers. Um, skills and assets, so again, these are really kind of strengths as well as the next category, so these are things that you learn and you can talk about in that interview, but now also strengths and weaknesses. So you want to think about things that in that job make you a strong candidate for that position and things that are going to hurt you. And so this is also a good time to, as you're looking through your resume and your different positions listed, start to identify your weaknesses because I say this a lot in an interview, a lot of the times you're going to swing your sword but you need to know when to put your shield up. So as you're looking at your different uh, jobs, Maybe there's a gap of employment. Uh, maybe you've been in a position that you should have been promoted out of, but you didn't, and you were stagnant in that position. As you're writing this grid, take the time to identify what these weaknesses are and be prepared with an answer. So, for example, um, if, you are, if you have a job a, a history or gap in employment, be able to talk about why. Own it. It's there. It's not, you're not going to be able to hide it, but you, just be able to talk about why you did that, what you learned from it, and what you're doing moving forward to fix that. Um, you know, if I was someone who was going to have to answer that question, I might say, yeah, I've spent the last year really trying to find the right career. And um, at that point, I, I had some trouble. I interviewed with some other companies. And I just wasn't the best candidate or fit for those jobs. But through my research, I found out that enterprise is a great opportunity. And it, it really aligns with some of my successes in my previous jobs. And that's what brings me here today. So be able to defend yourself from the weaknesses that you've identified ahead of time. Um, another one, for instance, if you were, let's say, a major not related to that job. So that's where really making sure that your experience is going to help you to get that job. Because for instance, if I have somebody who is a biology major coming to interview for a management training position that requires sales, that's gonna be a question. So they just uh, really need to have a way to answer that and understand and help me to understand why they wanna do this and why they decided not to do biology or you know, get to med school or whatever. And it can be as something as simple as, hey, I went to school for three years and I was that close to completing the program when dawned on me that it wasn't for me. And so um, I did find out, however, the enterprise hires all majors. And so I really wanted to make sure that my work experience was gonna help me land a job. And um, even though I was a biology major, my three years of waitressing tables really allowed me to uh, be able to be great with people and understand sales. So that's just kind of examples of how you can defend some of those things on your resume. Now, content areas. So we're also gonna go over a slide later that's kind of got what I would see as a, as a really good resume. But it's as simple as this. Your personal information at the top, Career objective, um, there's a slide in particular about that later and I do want to discuss career objective. Education, definitely list it. Don't list your high school education. We hope you graduated high school. Um, work experience, additional experience, and so that's again when we talked about clubs and organizations that you were involved with. Awards and honors, professional skills, and references. So references, I, I think I took the slide out about them. Do us a favor, guys. Do not list your references on your resume. Just don't do it. It's a waste of space. 
employers will ask you if you need to provide references. So while if it does make you feel more comfortable, you can list references provided upon request on the bottom, I don't even think that's necessary. Um, you know, people will come into the interview room and hand me a page of, of references that I'll never look twice at. Save a tree, just, just don't uh, provide it unless it's asked for. So your personal information. I think a lot of this goes without saying, your name, your contact information. A couple of things I wanna highlight. A good way to uh, paint a negative picture of yourself is to have a really silly email address. I think we all know what those are. I'm sure we've all had them at one point or another. I was football player 774 for like 20 years, and I finally got a new email address. It's just my first name, middle initial, last name, and a number. Um, so if you don't have one of those already, just make one, or you can even use your school email. But it's probably best not to have a, a goofy email address on your resume. Number two, and it's a pet peeve of mine, so if you list your cell phone number, number one, get your voicemail box set up. Um, as a recruiter, when we try to call people, you know, yeah, this day and age, everyone has call ID on their cell phones. Sometimes they're not gonna answer because they don't know the number, but then I can't even leave a voicemail about, hey, I'm the recruiter for the job you're trying to get. I need to talk to you about it. And they might never return that call and then I'm on to the next person. So have your voicemail box set up and just try to have it somewhat professional. Hey, this is Jeff. I'm sorry I missed your call. Please leave my message. That's all it takes. But when it comes to your personal information, that stuff is important to have um, and to pay attention to. Your objective. So Travis and I were talking about objectives earlier. Um, you know, in my, in my opinion, it can help you, but it can also hurt you. If you're gonna list your objective, we probably don't wanna see stuff that just says, I wanna have a great job with a really good company that has a good reputation. I, I hope that's what you want. And I hope that's what we are. What we wanna see in an objective is that you've taken the time and to make it a little more specific. So, even as far as I'd love to achieve a career in enterprise where I can grow my sales and management experience, get promoted through the company, that would be great. Um, but what I also see is people who have objectives that they've stuck on their resume from three interviews ago that says, you know, I want to get into the field of Homeland Security and I think this job's gonna help me to do it. It's not, enterprise is not gonna do that for you. And guess what, I read that and that person automatically, like why, why are you here? I mean, is this job really what you want? And it is, it turns out it's probably someone who's just looking for a job and a paycheck. And so that's a good way to lose that battle quick. So if you're gonna have an objective or a summary, make sure it is very specific to the job that you have. Or applying for, I'm sorry. Sample objective statement. So these are ones that I would deem as pretty effective. Training physician in real estate property management with the opportunity to contrib con contribute strong financial skills and relative experience. Administrative role in a public relations firm with the ability to move into a marketing position. I have a great idea of what that person wants to do and I can automatically relate it to what we're doing and, and how they're gonna get there through this job. Education, it needs to be on there. You wanna list the school when you graduated, what your degree was in, any minors, what your major was. But as we talked about earlier, if your major is completely unrelated to that job, be ready to explain that because you're probably gonna need to. Um, I usually start every interview out by, again, going over someone's Oops. going over someone's resume in depth. And so that's the first thing generally is their education. And so I always want to know, well, this was your major. What happened? What was your dream when you picked it? And, and what brought you here today? So be ready to discuss that. Um, GPA, well, if you're proud of it, put it on there. If you're not, probably leave it off. Um, a lot of the time, I'm not going to ask what it is. If it's there and it's a good number, I'll ask you how you achieved it. But um, if, if it's, you know, usually the, a good rule of thumb is 3.0 or higher, list it. If it's lower, just leave it off. We'll, we'll do, we'll get to that when we do our background checks. Um, any honors that you achieve, so graduating summa cum laude or anything, please list that as well. It's again, something else to be proud of and talk about. Um, I said it earlier, guys, don't list your high school on there. It's a waste of space. And again, we talk about trying to condense your resume to one page. That's just completely unnecessary. Um, just do yourself a favor and leave it off. Work experience, so very, very important. Number one, you can have different resumes for different positions, different companies that you're applying for, different industries. You do not have to put every employer you've ever had on your resume. So what you really want to do is focus on, again, as you're doing that self-assessment, here's the job I'm applying to, here are the positions I've held, and here's how I think they're going to relate to this job. You want to list the ones that are going to help you. So it's okay to leave them off if there is absolutely no relevant experience in, in that job to what you're doing. So. If I'm interviewing somebody, and again, we're talking about sales, marketing, management, customer service, and they have on there that they were something completely unrelated, um, maybe a nurse. You know, if that's what they've done for their whole life, we're going to want to talk about it. But I guess I'm just trying to get you guys to understand that there are certain jobs that can be left off your resume. 
But if you can spin it in a way that you think you're going to be able to provide great examples from your employment at that place and how it relates, then put it on there. Now, we also talked earlier, when it comes down to what you list under that job, we don't want to see that you were a waiter who waited tables and brought drinks to their customers. We want to see what you achieved in that job, and we want you to use action words. So action words are things like, I achieved, or I generated, or there's a whole list of them on this next page. But things that lead us to um, what those accomplishments were, how you achieved them, and they're, they're action words, they're exciting. So we want to see those. Um, here's a lot of those words, so whole list of them. Um, if you guys want that list, I can get it for you. But when you're describing the things you've done, stick to those words. Additional experience, um, anything else that you've done, guys, and you think it's going to help, put it on there. Put it under your work experience. Um, when we go over this sample resume that I have, I think they listed on there as leadership experience. And so that's what we look for. Um, again, it could be a great topic of conversation to really convey how you were a leader in school and some of the things you accomplished. And if I see someone who's had several jobs throughout college and they were also involved in a fraternity or sorority and they played a sport, this person can manage their time well. This is someone I want on my team who they're probably really going to get it and work hard and understand that, uh, what it takes to get to the next level. So if you can list it, list it under there and be proud of it. Awards and honors. So sometimes if you have a lot of awards and honors, you can actually do a completely separate section with those awards and honors. Um, again, as I said, it is subjective. So you can also list those awards or honors under where the job experience is if you'd like to do that. But depending on the space you're working with and kind of where you're at when you get done with your resume, that kind of dictates whether or not you should do that, in my opinion. Um, but also, if you have any honors, you know, for me, I, I know that on my resume I used four and a half years ago, I listed some of my football honors on there. Um, while I'd love to still list those, I think they're becoming less pertinent in, in my position. But um, anything that you're proud of, anything that's going to help, if you can't list it under job experience, do have an awards and honors page and list those things. Professional skills. So this is another thing, you know, when you're talking about saving space on a resume, a lot of people will put on a whole different section, you're taking up, you know, an eighth of your resume to say that you're a hard worker, you know teamwork, um, you're a leader. I, I hope that you're all those things, but when I look at skills, I want to know things that really make you stand out amongst the rest. Everyone I interview says that they're a leader, says that they're a hard worker, and I, again, they should be. But what I want to see is that you are fluent in Spanish, you know Microsoft Suite, you have learned things that truly make you a unique candidate. So when it comes to your skills, try to stick to things that really like let you stand out, not the things that, again, we can assume that you're going to want to be in that position. References. So again, we talked about it. If they're not asked for, you probably don't need to furnish them. But some jobs do ask for them. And so making sure you have a good set of references is important. Obviously, you want to make sure that if someone is a reference, they know that they're a reference. So if they do get that random phone call, they're aware, they know what to say, they know what the deal is. Um, and if it is on a sheet of paper, when it comes to the formatting, make sure it's the same format, font, and everything as the rest of your resume. Um, and be sure that, again, correct spelling, their position and title where they're at right now, the best phone number to reach them for. Um, and again, when it says, you know, you can note that at the bottom, personal preference, it's up to you. But as a recruiter in my position, and a lot of companies nowadays, usually we don't do reference checks until the tech process. So that's usually handled by a third party vendor that's going to really just verify your employment. Um, but that changes job to job. So definitely have them ready. Make sure your references know who they are, but I would not furnish them unless they're asked for. Resume design. So again, I am a fan of a conservative resume. And I'm going to show you guys what I was able to find that I think in my eyes, I'm, I'm happy about it. But here are some of the specifications in terms of white or off white paper. Um, again, Sometimes people use the fancy paper, and if you have it, that's awesome, but it's not a make or break deal. Um, Non-decorative typefaces, so your Times New Roman, your Arial, again, conservative is better. Um, one typeface, no italics or script or underlying words, it's just not necessary. Um, no acronyms or abbreviations. Reverse chronological order, and I think this is important. So as we're going through your employment history, the most current job first, your recent job, the one that you're currently employed at, and then we'll work our way down. Um, choose a pattern of spacing and stick with it, so you do want it to look uniform and neat throughout your entire resume. Um, don't fold or staple, so try to keep it in a pad folio. I, I really encourage all you guys to get a pad folio if you don't already have one. Um, it's great to take to interviews, it's great to take to really anything like a job fair, have your resumes ready, and then it's also going to provide you a, somewhere to take notes and write things down. Um, and if you're mailing it, put it in a large envelope. So I've actually got printouts of this, guys, and I think that this is a very good example of what I would look for in a great resume. The formatting is the same throughout. 
Um, it's very neat. It sticks to relevant information. And although it's um, kind of small up here, number one, it includes links to professional profile. I didn't talk about it earlier, but it wouldn't hurt you to put a link to your LinkedIn if you have one. Um, that's another thing I really advise all of you guys to go ahead and try to build for yourselves as you're thinking about stepping out to the work world. Get a LinkedIn. Um, it's a really good format for recruiters to reach out to you and for you to learn a thing or two. Yeah, you go test yourself. Um, but it, that's okay to list on there as well. Um, the professional summary wasn't fluffy, so if you read through that, it's direct, it's to the point. It doesn't have any generic, I want a good job with a good company. Three, GPA is listed. What was this person's GPA, someone who already has it? 3.45, so that's worth bragging about. They worked hard for that. Um, there's no mention of high school. We don't want it, we don't need it. His coursework wasn't included. Um, that was on site earlier, I think I skipped over it, but. We don't really need to know any specific courses that you took. Again, that's something that we can probably determine through your major and what that was. Um, but if it was a course that got you certified or taught you a very unique skill, that could be something to list on your skills and abilities there at the bottom. Um, no pronouns, so not referring to himself in the first person. He used action verbs. I talk about them, I love them, use them. Um, and it doesn't include a list of references, but I'm sure this person has a list included. So, I really wanted to hand that out to you guys. Just look at that. I mean, it, it is a good um, reference to use when building your resume. I think that, um, again, the, the important parts of what I said today are included on there. So keep that. And when you're building your resume, try to at least have it stick to that to some degree. Cover letters. Some companies will ask for a cover letter. Some won't. Um, I will say it's not a bad idea. You know, when it comes to a recruiter and me looking at the level of engagement from a candidate, some of them write a cover letter, and again, it's one of those deals where if you do it the wrong way, it can be absolutely detrimental to the hiring process. You submit the cover letter from the job you applied for three years ago that's nothing to do with us, that's not good. But if I read your cover letter, it's addressed to Mr. Jeff Green with Enterprise Holdings, Talent Acquisition Specialist, and it highlights why they want this job, the one with Enterprise, it highlights how their experience is relevant, and it sums up the reason they are a good candidate for the position. Hey, that's awesome, I wanna see this person. So it will, it will help you if you want to write that and you want to spend the time to do it. Um, it's not always required, but again, I, I definitely would recommend writing it if you have the time, just do it the right way. Um, but again, when it, when it comes down to it, make sure it is personalized, and just like your summary, it has to do with the position that you're applying for. Another thing I did want to highlight, so some companies nowadays don't even look at resumes. Some companies just look at the application. Um, at Enterprise, we used to do that. Now I do have the ability to look at the resume and kind of use that as my primary source of information, but some companies aren't. And what I noticed early on in my career was that a lot of the times the information didn't quite match up. The application, the dates, and the things I saw on the resume were two different times or two different jobs or the, the time frame was all off. Those things all need to match up. So be sure that when you're doing an application online, sometimes they take a little while. Um, I know ours, we've tried to shorten it as many times as we can, but we do need that information. Um, so if it has to do with the law and the legality of applying to jobs, make sure that the information on your application is as accurate as the information on your resume and they need to match. So don't just skip over that. Be sure that you're putting the time and effort into it. Um, obviously proofread your resume, no misspellings or anything like that. And please utilize Travis, utilize the Career Services Department to help you. And as you're building this resume and you're doing a lot of research on that position, I know that he will be more than willing to help you to make sure that you're setting yourself up for success. But again, guys, your resume is gonna be your tool to get you in the door, but your ability to interview and answer the questions as we see fit, that's on you. So use your resume as a resource to help you there too. Research the position you're applying for and make sure everything on that resume is relevant so that you have a lot of ammunition going into that interview room and you'll be able to swing your sword more than put your shield up. Um, also, there's a lot, a lot, a lot of resources out there. Google it, it's all it takes anymore, right? A lot of the information is there, but as I said at the beginning of this presentation, a lot of it is very subjective. There is no right or wrong resume, but what you really wanna do is, again, through your research at the position in the company, make sure your resume fits the job that you're applying for, and I cannot stress that enough, guys. So, you know, just to kind of get into a little bit in the interviewing um, side of things, I will have people that come in and don't know anything about the job, anything about the company. They just applied, they qualified, and we interviewed them. That candidate's probably not gonna make it far through the interview process. So with that, building your resume and doing research on the company so that you know what that resume is being built for, do it, guys. Know everything there is to know about the company, 
know when it was founded, know what they're looking for in an employee, and through that you can start to determine the interview questions that are going to be asked, and when you start to build your resume and the experience on there, you're going to know what different types of stories and things you're proud of and you want to brag about in the interview, how they're going to relate to that position. So, that being said, what questions do you guys have for me? Yes. Well, I play football here again, and um, I cannot stress enough, and I say it, and I wish I was a picture of that, but you guys do need to start determining what you want to do and what you're going to do to help you get there. I didn't do that. So I had no idea what I wanted to do until my last month of uh, college, and I went to a job here, and I met a recruiter, which is what I do now. Um, but for me, I really wanted a company that I could grow with. A lot of companies say that, but once I did research enterprise and the job and what I was trying to get myself into, I saw that we only promote from within. Um, if you do work hard, you can get promoted and make more money, you can stay with the same company. And then I also saw the experience that it was going to give me, and I, and I really understood that if enterprise doesn't work, every day I stay with the company is a day stronger my resume gets. So while I was late to the punch and strengthening that resume, I didn't do it very well throughout college. What I did do a good job of was um, understanding what I had done and being able to relate that to disposition. So football was huge for me. I used it a lot in the interview room, um, some of the experiences with leadership and persuasive ability. And then I also worked at Best Buy for a summer, so that's customer service and sales. And then I also worked at a grocery store for four years. There's customer service. Um, so I was able to get the job like that, but that's really what brought me to Enterprise, man. I wanted an opportunity that I could grow with the company, I could compete. Um, and if I was one that was going to work hard and really dive into understanding the business and how to get promoted, I was going to get promoted, and it's all been true. What else you guys got for me? I also have your back then, but... Yeah, but I played the end. I uh, really enjoyed my time playing. I did play for Coach Kirkland for two years, so he was here while I was here. But, um, you know, anybody who's involved in sports, enjoy every bit of it because it's going to go away one day. And um, I wish I could lie and tell you I didn't miss it four and a half years later, but I do every day. Um, but sports are great, but I cannot also stress enough, guys, get involved in something, you know. I'm sure everyone in here, the fact that you've taken the initiative to come here today and learn tells me that you're all probably on the straight and narrow. But, um, if you're not involved in anything now, try to do that in your last one or two years in college and have something to talk about when you go into that interview room. What's next? The more questions, the better, because I have to go back to work after this. So. Number one, again and again, is results. When I'm looking at their experience, when I look at what's underneath that, I want to see results in those jobs that they've had. Because telling me that they were a sales rep for um, AT&T is great, but if I look and then the description just says they, that was it, they were a sales rep, they helped customers, they sold cell phone plans, well, I know that. But when I look at somebody who has that they were a sales rep and they were number one in their region for four out of six months last uh, half year, or, um, they were able to net the biggest sale on uh, some competition they had. That's a results-driven person. And I think anybody wants a results-driven person, especially at Enterprise. So I want to see the results that have already been achieved. Um, number two, when I see someone who has had a lot of involvement, if, you know, especially when I'm looking at college students, I told you guys a million times, get involved in stuff. Um, when I see that candidate who's had internships, who's had a lot of leadership experience, experience within the classroom or with other organizations on campus, that's the first time I'm like, this is a workhorse. They've really taken a vested effort to do things to better themselves and make themselves a good candidate straight out of school. So for someone who does take the time and, and obviously can manage that time and do all these things, that's something else on a resume. So the more you can put on there, the better. Um, but it has to be relevant. You have to be able to speak to how relevant it is, obviously. What else you guys got for me? Going once, going twice. All right, if you guys do have any questions, feel free to reach out to me. I've got some business cards up here, and if you guys have any questions about Enterprise, I'd love to answer them. But guys, thank you so much for coming out today, and best of luck to all of you, all right? Thank, thank you, Jeff. And um, uh, please, like he said, he doesn't want to go back to work yet, so come up here and talk to him about uh, careers. If you have any questions that maybe you didn't, didn't think of right off come on up um, remember to drop your 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 little cards in the box back there that uh, we we set on the table and uh, please take take stuff off the table and take it home with you so um,
Any anything else right now? I mean, any other questions for Jeff, or any other questions about resumes or just career services in general? Are they, everybody's pretty good. Okay. Use him, guys. Use him all that you yes. can, please. <laughs> I uh, I just didn't in school, and again, I got lucky. But now that I do this job, the capacity that I work, these guys are a gold mine of information. They will set you up to get your first job out of school. So please. <laughs> Try, try our best. So. Um, thanks for coming out. We, we've got another session this evening at 530. It's for um, uh, service organizations. So um, like things like AmeriCorps, if you've heard of that, or City Year. A real, I think it's going to be really good. So if you have some time to come out at 530, that would be great. And, uh, and tomorrow at this time, we've got our interview skills session. And, um, and of course, you can see the rest of the schedule out there on the board. So uh, thanks, everybody, very much.